Hey, Denise, how are you doing? Doing well, thank you. Doing good. Doing and good. hello, my boy, Eric. I love you, as always. He says, hello, mama. He says, um, he says he, he, he's saying I love you, but he's wanting me to show you, tell you he's in a white t-shirt. He wanted, he really wants me to let you know that. So I'm assuming that is like a favorite shirt of his. Oh, he used to love those. Okay. Cause he really uh, have little short sleeves or just no sleeves. His is, um, his is short sleeves. Okay. Um, but it's really white. So it, that makes me, that tells me he really likes that shirt. Oh yeah. He, he yeah. wore that all the time. Yeah. You're never that white though. I'm just <laughs> well, no, I'm not actually. Anyway, could you go get Mr. George Floyd in here for us? So we can ask him some questions and shed yeah. some light on what's going on. Eric says yes. And um he's he's coming in and he's Eric, he's, he's, um, he's coming in and he's like, he's sitting down. Um, he's sitting, he's very, he's a real kind gentleman. Um, sorry, I missed that. Could you um, sit? Sorry. Um, <laughs> that's sorry. Um, he's, he's very gentle. The way he comes in, his energy is real soft and real, just gentle. And he's here and, um, what's he wearing? He, He's wearing um, some dark colored pants. It's almost like I want to say like a like a navy blue type, um, like almost like a uniform type navy blue pants. Okay. And um, he's wearing. Um, he's showing me he's wearing a black t-shirt. Um, okay. Yeah, he's wearing a black t-shirt. He's um, very casual dress. Um, Thank you for coming in. He says he feels very honored. Um, he's he feels very honored that you, um, Doctor Elisa, asked him to come through, and that's how he's phrasing it, Doctor Elisa. That's um, so sweet. I I get that he has been introduced to Eric prior to today because okay. they they seem to like. Um, know each other um and they're not like best of friends like forever and ever but they know each other very well and it's like they're getting um they've been having a lot of um as eric says um coffee chats oh uh, that's good yeah. yeah well you know I, I guess one of the most important questions there are many um did you transition okay are you okay now he said um of course he's okay now um and he says he says in in the middle of it all he says he was scared and he was like um this really can't be happening but then um he's showing me his his grandmother came to um, came to him. He saw his grandmother, and that helped. Um, that kind of relaxed him enough to know like it was going to be okay. And I and he's it was his grandmother that is, is I guess is who he first met. I don't know if it's his grandmother that helped raise him. Um, he says part of the time, yes. Okay. Well, I know that um, you were calling out for your mom. Let me see where that question was. Um, yeah. When you yelled out for your mom, yelled out the word mom, did she come for you also? He said, yes, she did. And he says, um, he he says it's like his grandmother was there so he kind of knew what was what was going on um did you call your grandmother mom what did you call your grandmother he says he called her um sometimes you know he called her mom and sometimes he called her um 
uh, not like not grandmother, but um, maybe like something like Granny, but I feel it's a different name. Um, okay. Yeah, something similar to Granny is what he's saying. All right, something starts with a G. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, did you know that the the twenty dollar bill um, was counterfeit um, when you used it? He says that is one of the, he's noticed that that is one of the, uh, he calls it big debates. Did I know it was fake? Did I know, did I think it was real? Um, he, he's saying, no, he didn't know that that was actually a fake $20 bill. Otherwise he wouldn't yes. have went in there. Um, but he said he kind of had a, odd feeling about it when he went in there and had it in his hand. And he, he says, because of the texture of the dollar bill, okay. of the $20 bill, the texture of it, he says there's a difference in the texture of it. And, but he didn't, but he didn't think this is counterfeit, you know, he just. So it's sort of a subconscious icky feeling about it, but not like, this is counterfeit, but I'm gonna spend it anyway. Is is that what you're talking about? He, yeah, yeah. He says it's almost like this one felt weird, you know, different. You know, he says, you know, like how a crispy twenty dollar bill feels different yeah. from an old. He says this one felt different, and he just knew it felt different, but he didn't think put, that. Yeah, he didn't go. Oh, this is a counterfeit because that's not where his thoughts were on this. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, this one blog member, we know the answer to this now, wants to know if you were involved in a counterfeit uh, scheme or other criminal activity when you were arrested and would have gone to um, prison for. No, that's, so that's not true. No. Um, that icky feeling, I'm wondering if it was your higher self sort of tapping in to the fact that you were about to engage in or honor a spiritual contract of yours. Could that be part of it? And we'll get further into that as well. He says, a very good. He says, very good. Um, he says, you know, of course, where he is now and, and looking, as he says, but he wants to say forward, but of course, to us, it's looking backwards, but he's like looking forward at it. He said, um, the whole thing, was, you know, if you were to be where, if you could redo it, you would know that that was part of your spiritual contract and that was going to be an exit and you probably would have ran the other way. Yeah. Because he says no one, he doesn't feel anyone goes in knowing like, okay, this is my spiritual contract. I'm going to die and this is what, and, and I'm going to be okay. Most people would run the other way. But he says, um, yes, all of that. And there are some things he did prior to that also. I feel like he called some people or stopped by and visited some people or he, he's saying he did some, his behaviors that day were out of the ordinary, um, like contacting some friends or just going by to say hello and stuff like that was kind of out of the ordinary for him. And um, that was, you know, because subconsciously his higher self was preparing him for this exit. Well, I mean, I'm sure he didn't wake up in the morning thinking that, wow, this is going to be my last day on earth. I mean, that's, I mean so when you were dying, if you were thinking, my God, I can't believe this is the end for me. Mm. He said, no, he didn't wake up with that feeling. And um, he says, um, had if he had he says he probably would have made different choices and um to try and avoid the situation because he said yeah he was really um hoping to make things different for him himself um and he's kind of chuckling he's saying I really was scared of the COVID-19. I was scared that that's what I was going to get and die from it. Oh, um, 
Okay, so why, well, somebody wants to know, and I didn't know this, why did you wait outside the Cups Food convenience store in your car after you used the fake 20? Why did you not drive away? I'm assuming because you didn't think there was anything wrong with it, right? Or what? He said, um, he's showing me like he was opening something. Um, it's like something to eat or something. Okay. Um, he's showing me it was some some type of i don't think it's a sandwich or anything but what he's showing me maybe it's some food yeah yeah or like a some type of food i want to say like a slim jim or beef jerky or something or, or something small and he was opening that opening it up you know and um he also was thinking about um he was talking about, um, he, I feel like he, he, the way he's saying, like he was looking for a job, like he was going somewhere to think to about some type of employment. So, okay. yeah, so he says, you know, he didn't, he wasn't, he said, you know, um, of course, everybody just about knows about my past. So, I'm smart enough to know that if I'm using a counterfeit 20 to get the heck out of there. So, yeah, so that, that really seems to validate the fact that you did not know it was a fake. How awful. All right. Why did, let's talk about Chau, Chauvin, or I don't know his name, the, the guy who put his knee to your neck. Why did he do that? Why did he feel like he needed to do that? You were already handcuffed. And do you know why he was so hostile toward you? he says um he says he did try to move you know okay um he wasn't being aggressive but he did try to move um and he um he says you know this guy um i guess he was a, a training cop i'm assuming i don't uh, know he oh, was training some, others yeah like he was helping to train like he was oh, so he was showing that technique mentoring or something is what i get like he was like because he's showing me like he was a teacher like showing and something and um he says you know his ego got in the way of of it all um is what he's saying um he's very kind he's kind of protective over this cop well Let's talk about that. And we'll, we'll, actually, we will, but not right now. Um, so he, Derek Shelvin, oh, <laughs> however you pronounce it, basically put his knee on your neck to show a rookie or rookies, this is how it's done, like that? Yeah, and it was, and, you know, because he said he did move, you know, like, because he said, you know, my face was on the ground and, and it was, you know, it, and, and the, in the way he's showing me position, the way his face was just really down in the ground. So he was moving and he says, you know, um, he's saying, uh, you know, that, that triggered because, you know, here you have somebody in handcuffs and they're moving oh, and yeah. that, yeah. and that puts the, the police officer on high alert. But, you know, he, he said he was trying to tell him, you know, like, um, like he, he, it was, uh, he was hurting and it was uncomfortable in that. And, you know, it's like, um, I guess that police officer didn't hear that part. He yeah. actually didn't hear? Um, I, I, I feel like he did hear, but you know, it's like, right. but he didn't hear. And, and he just wanted to show. Go on. Um, yeah. It's what he's saying. Um, and, and so the more he talked, the more he was just showing him like to shut up. Uh -huh. um, uh, but he says, you know, it's kind of like stepping on somebody's finger. You don't realize how hard you're doing it. Yeah. I'm feeling it. Um, and he says, and you know, of course, people are arguing back and forth. He knew and he didn't know. He, you know, and, and he says it. Uh, you know, he knew that he was putting a lot of pressure on me, but 
Did he think he was going to kill you? I mean, did he think he was actually? That kill was not. That was not his. That was not in his thoughts. That was not his intent. Was I'm going to kill this man? It was more of I'm going to show this man. Mm, God. All right. So is he a racist? He says he has some underlying. Um, hurt and anger and a lot of fear and you know he says um which all of that is entangled in being you know people who are racist who are prejudiced or whatever and and because that's what what it all is it's not that people really hate a certain color it's what's behind all of that and he's showing me like the hurt and the anger and the fear is like all knotted up and tangled behind that. Um, did he think he was better than or privileged or all of these other stuff, the stuff that you're hearing? He said, of course, you know, he said he felt like he, um, a white supremacy kind of mindset. He wouldn't go that deep. He wouldn't go that deep. He says, it's just, I feel like more because he had the badge. Oh, Ah, okay. Was there something that happened in Derek's um, lifetime that made him have that kind of mindset, the fear and hatred and looking down on people of color? Well, he said he was, well, part of his anger in that he's telling me comes from him being bullied as a young kid. By kids and black or? just kids and stuff like that. Okay. Um, but, um, it's almost like though i just feel like that's kind of like in a community there though where it's still pretty segregate you know i want to say segregate but it's known like there are still a lot of people who see um there's a lot of prejudice up there he's showing me yeah, it's too bad and um so yeah so it's just okay so what did did so, did somebody or Derek have their um, leg against your back also? Or I, I I don't know all the details, but I don't. You know, I really don't either. I I didn't want to read about it or know about it. I just yeah. Was somebody else, uh, or was Derek using another body part, or was somebody else involved also in pretty much asphyxi asphyxiating you? He showed me there was some pressure on his back. Is that from Derek or somebody else? Um, with the way he's showing me how Derek is, there's no way it could have been just Derek. Okay, so there, um, yeah, there, there had to be calling, someone else. Please, please, he can't breathe, he can't breathe. Why didn't Derek react to that? he says because he didn't want to hear that okay it was about power yeah did you two know each other in this lifetime there's some thought about whether you guys worked i don't know as bouncers I can't it's like um distance acquaintances you know like um it's more of a distance acquaint you know like a an acquaintance nothing well, like a cop you see on the beat every once in a while? It's not anything he says you'd say, hey, how's it going? It's not anything. You just knew he, we knew each other's face, you know. And, oh, okay. And, yeah, like so that. didn't but, work together um, um, at all, right? He, when, he said, when you asked that, he says, like, we worked at the same establishment, but we didn't work together. Oh, Okay. Yeah. So there was nothing that happened between you previously that made him have some sort of personal vendetta against you. No. Okay. Um, was there, does, did, does Derek uh, have an addiction that might have compromised his ability to think rationally or some mental illness? Not that it excuses it, but. He, I don't, he says, no, there wasn't an, there's okay. not an addiction or not a mental illness. No. 
Okay. Did you injure or kill Derek in a previous incarnation? Someone wants to know. You know, um, of course I knew I was going to be interviewing him. So, and I have been talking and I call him Floyd. I don't know why I call him Floyd. Okay. And, and when he, the day after he transitioned, one of the people I manage has her father's name, and which is her first name, Floyd. And I was calling her Floyd instead of by her middle name. And I couldn't figure it, but it was him coming to me, and I keep calling him Floyd. And I was asking him today, like, Floyd, you know, like, what was this life about? What was another life that reflected on this life? You know, why, why so leaving this planet? So, you know, violent like this and stuff. So, and um, he says in another life that he definitely was, um, uh, um, he's showing me like he was like equivalent to a king or something. And he was what we would call entitled, but I still feel like he was a person of color. And, um, and, and he, you know, kind of like did the same thing to people that was done to him in a sense, you know, but had other people do it to them. And so that, and he's, um, and he says with this, with this um, police officer, he said, uh, in another life, um, he's showing me on a ship. It's almost like um, Floyd was a pirate on a pirate ship or something way back, you know, when before they had electricity and stuff. And he took over the ship, and I feel like he disposed of that police officer in that lifetime. And when I say dispose, I feel like he, um, um, He's showing me like um, with a rope around his neck. So I don't know how he could hang him on the boat, but I just feel well, like. I mean, he could kill long too, right? I mean, I don't know how all this stuff. Yeah, but he's showing me this is what he did in that lifetime. Um, he says, really, he says, um, we're really good friends on the other side. Oh my God, I cannot imagine. Well, we'll talk about that more. So um, the, the one where you were king. Mm -hmm. Where was that and what century, more or less? Um, he's showing me this is back in the late 1600s. And um, I, where he's showing me it was more in Africa. Is, okay. is, yeah, is where it was. Okay, mm -hmm. let's, let's talk about your death. Uh, we're all concerned, of course, whether you suffered a lot or not. Or you know, he says, we all choose our exits. And he says, and he knows that you've heard of that. And, and you know, when we go out like that, he said, yes, there was suffering during that moment. Mm -hmm. But he says, you know, um, our source, our God, our whatever you want to call it, this energy is extremely loving and, and, um, and comforting to where it gets to a point where they go, okay, and takes your soul and you just relieves you of that. And it's almost like um, uh having he says having a bad toothache and you go to the dentist mm -hmm. and you get it fixed and it's like you just feel nothing but comfort and relief and you exactly. you, you just kind of like forget about that and focus on the the relief and the, com the comfort of not having that pain and he's saying that's how it was for him um, how long did did you suffer you think in minutes he says, um, suffering wise, you know, he, um, and he's taken into consideration the humiliation and, oh, yeah. and everything. He says like about, he says a good 15 minutes. And, and I feel like it's because of the way he was um, arrested and how he was treated. Yeah, and he didn't do anything wrong, it looks like. It's ridiculous. No. Right, 
what were some of your thoughts as you were under the knee of Derek Chauvin? He was real afraid of going back to prison because he says, you know, I have a, I have a history, you know, and he says, yeah, and, yeah. And, and he says he was real concerned about that because, you know, um, he says it's real, he says, let's be honest. It's, I, I don't have, I didn't have the money for an attorney or anything oh, like that. Yeah. So I would just be doing, going through the process and getting a public defender and they would just be shuffling paper to go on to their next one. Cause yeah. they're only being a public defender because that's what they have to do for a certain amount of time. Okay, real quickly, cause I, I want to be yeah. sure to ask all these questions, but um, sorry to cut you off. George. That's okay. Uh, what are the thoughts? Were you like, I can't believe this is happening. I might die. Did you think things like that too? I guess? Yes, he, like friend, well, he, family, um, he said he went through family and he was, a lot of it was he said he was having like a quick fit life review almost, he said of everything that he did, wishing, you know, like, how did I end up here? What did I do to get here? And all of that. Um, and he was just thinking about, you know, getting out from under there and, and doing the next, the right, just doing what's right, he's saying. Um, and he, yeah, he just couldn't believe he was there. And he didn't understand why nobody responded because he said, even though the police didn't respond, he thought it was strange how everybody stood around and did nothing. Well, except say, you know, get off of him and he's dying. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. let's talk about your transition. Um, did you see a tunnel? Did you appear in a white room? We know your grandma and perhaps your mom, maybe that's one of the same, mm -hmm. met you, uh, but what was it like? He said that was the beautiful part. He's showing me, um, it's like he saw the yellow, like a yellow golden light and he says it's it's he's the way he's showing me it's kind of like a tunnel mm -hmm. and and the more he followed it the bigger it got the light and and then the brighter it got and the and the light was turning white like from golden to white mm -hmm. and he says and it's just such a hypnotic vibration that you and you feel it within every fiber of your soul he's saying that you just you keep going. It's like you don't even think, oh, but what about here? You just keep following it. Just and, uh, drawn. Were you like walking? I mean, your soul with your little soul legs? Your little soul legs. That's cute. <laughs> um, you know, he said or it is moving. like you're walking at first and then you realize you're not. He says it's like, um, you're floating, he says, you're yeah. just floating, but you feel like you're walking. Well, that's weird. Now, mm -hmm. why did the paramedics not follow protocol when they arrived? Why didn't they immediately try to resuscitate you and administer CPR? That's probably another thing you wondered, why, isn't pe why aren't people helping me? He says it wasn't part of the plan. He wasn't oh, supposed to be. Oh, oh. All right, so were the paramedics part of the contract? He said, yes. All right, so um, how can, this is a blog number one, mo uh, most of these are, how can we get rid of white supremacy in the US since you gave your life, well, let's talk about that. What was your life purpose this time? What was the purpose of your contract, your spiritual mission? Well, he says, you know, in the beginning, and he's showing me when he was born and come in here, that that wasn't his contract was to end up doing this. Mm -hmm. But it's with as time went on. And he says, you know, you've heard where we go back and visit and we, you know, uh, he made the contract, he made the decision that yes, this would be a part of his contract. This is what he would do. Um, because um and and it would happen at the time that it happened because it was because everything's so heightened as it is now yeah um, and he said so yes this was part of his contract 
um, it was his contract to do this. Um, Cause I, I don't feel like he would have lived long, longer had this not happened. You know, he could have got, I, I just feel like he would have got hit by a truck or got some kind of illness or something. He wasn't going to live a long life anyway. Well, so, course, did you feel that throughout your life? He was always wondered because he's telling me where he grew up. He saw a lot of violence and a lot of death and, um, and then how part of his criminal career went, he was wondering, is he going to be a statistics? Like, cause he knows that there were a lot of people, you know, um, that transitioned at a young age, um, growing up. Um, so he, you know, he questioned it because I feel like he was doing well and then he kind of turned the wrong, down the wrong street. Mm. All right, here's a question. Was your death, uh, was part of your soul contract, right? And so what are the lessons to all of us? Is this, is this, uh, mm, will this uh, change at some point how police force treat minorities in the future? I mean, and is there a spiritual purpose on all the, uh, well, just one at a time. What was your life, what was this death meant to, to cause to change the world to bring awareness to to uh, systemic racism in the police force or in society i mean what what was the aim and of course it could have happened at a more chaotic time well, which would be more powerful probably yeah well he says you know it's not just injustice um in the police force it's within the world itself mm. um in the racism, the prejudice, and all of that, and he mm -hmm. says, because it's worldwide, and he says, it's not just here in the United States, it's not just in Minnesota, it's not just in Texas, he says, it's worldwide, yeah. um, and he says, this is to, what this is about, it's, and it, this is about people coming together, but he says, and we're still having a difficult time, because some people this is bringing out their anger and they're bringing out it's bringing out old anger and frustration of feeling powerless and they react and i guess he's talking about the the violence and the looting and the yeah. fires and stuff like that he says we need to start expressing our love you know and and he says that's happening and he says and it will happen it will change around he said there's always going to be and he says, you know, um, somebody always pushing the envelope of saying, you know, whatever it is, as far as racism, hate, or, or whatever, you know, but it, it's coming to the surface. Well, I mean, it's going to have to, uh, for us to, I mean, sunlight is the best disinfectant. And I'm just wondering if, if you know, it looks like humanity is trying to evolve and shift from a dual, duality, conflict-ridden consciousness to one of unity and cooperation. And, and, and are you a part of that How, urge of triggering us to, to make that shift? He said definitely, and he's still, um, he's still <laughs> much a part of it on this side. He says, um, he's, it's, this isn't about, um, he says, we're still struggling with it here. He says, and this is what he's, his, what he's doing on the other side. And he, to, show, to show one another love, not um, show each other our fears. He says, because what's happening, both sides are getting triggered with their fears. And that's why they're acting the way that they, we are acting, he's saying. Um, and it's about showing one another. Um, it's uh, how is he like acceptance? It's like um, yeah, just you accepting fire where fire. they are. You can't fight yeah. fire. No, and he says, and it, and he doesn't support the looting, and he doesn't support the vandalism and the and the violence. He doesn't support that because he says that that just works against. Yeah, it did. It, it, it well, makes what it happened? 
it deepens the divide between us. It, he said it does. And he says, so he says, you know, it's like, he says it's, um, we're like emotionally immature in that. And so it's like, we have, we're having to learn how to do this in a more mature way. And of course, you know, we're, that's what we're stumbling to, to learn. Okay. Um, do you have a message for Antifa or any of the violent protesters? To show your support for whatever side you're on, do it with love. Doing yeah. it with anger, doing it with hate and, and repression and and he he says doesn't solve nothing it doesn't work for any purpose of good it just reiterates to the people who are against you why they are because of how you're being and and it just it just keeps feeding fuel to the to the fire he says he says come from a place of love put all that energy into something of love he says he says it will work yeah. much Otherwise, you're no better than what you're fighting. What you're fighting against. That's exactly true. You were a preacher. Did you preach this kind of thing, love? He said, "Absolutely." Okay. Now, do you have anything to say to the peaceful pre protesters? Um. You know, he says. Keep the focus on why you're there. And, um, and the way he says it is like, stay, stay close to your heart as to why you're there and, and what, what the purpose is. And because as long as you stay close to your heart as to why you're there, then your silent voice gets heard much clearer and much louder. Yeah. Protest in love, not in... Yes hate, fear, whatever. Okay, so what, do you have anything to say to this community this, that's blocked off? I can't even remember what the city is. Uh, but anyway, called Chaz. Now it's called CHOP. Uh, that they've taken over like eight city blocks. Um, and they, they got rid of the police department there and all that. Yeah, and he says that... You know, um, uh oh, did you freeze? Maybe did I freeze? Yeah, you did. It says it's me, apparently. So, mm -hmm. oh, it's okay. So, uh, what did you say? Okay. He, he says, you know, he says, this is showing where there, there's a lot of um, anger and of, um, he says, and a lot of hate and a lot of fear. Um, and what they're fighting about isn't even about him. That's what he's saying. It's not even about him and, and what they're, what they are saying. It's not about them because he says, they they've got it all tangled up they're they're just fighting because they're they're mad and they are not they're not even fighting for the cause of what they say they're fighting about they they've lost oh, sight of that what um, advice or message do you have i don't feel like they're gonna have those eight blocks he hmm. says um the best thing to do he, he he's saying put down he's saying your arms so i don't they must have some sort of weapons rather it be whatever it is he's saying to put it down and walk away go home and 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 come back in a place where you have people to that have a voice that can speak for you without you get caught up in the hate and the anger because i feel like there's something else triggering them it's not um this has just been, I feel like it's use. Okay, just real quick. I'm, we're going to have to have a little bit shorter answers, George. I'm sorry. 
But uh, what do you say to the people who are wanting to defund the police to completely get rid of the police force? He laughs and he says, is that really a solution? Or is that just putting a Band-Aid on something? He said, not all police are bad. It seems like it'd be worse for, I mean, rich people can hire private security, but, you know. Well, it's, it, he doesn't think that that's a great idea. He, he okay. says that's not the solution. All right, he now, says that doesn't get rid of the hate. The hate is not within the police department. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm going to talk about what to do with the police, with law enforcement in just a minute. But so I'm going to read some questions that are kind of the same. Are some of the protesters being, let me just read all of them and then you can say whatever you want. Are some protesters being paid to riot? Does George Soros have anything to do with your death, the media hype around your death, or the protests are rioting? Is it a... Um, um, or organized, okay, well, just, we'll just start with that. Or is this part uh, of, um, is the fulfillment of your, well, first of all, is it, who's paying the rioters, if any? He's, he's saying, the question, the answer to that is, no, the, the rioters are not getting paid and he, he knows that that is uh, something that's going around. Okay. However, he said, are there scams within what's going on? He said, of course. Like what? Name one. Yeah. Um, you know, trying to, um, uh, he doesn't want to go in depth, but you know, like trying to make it like it's all one-sided on one thing and like trying to jump on the bandwagon of it all to where they look better or, or like they're helping or whatever he okay. said. But that's being looked into, he said also. Okay. Was the fulfillment of your soul contract uh, a catalyst for change within the establishment to, or to expose the globalist state agenda? He says, He, sa he says both because they're all, they're tied to each other. He says both because it's tied to each other. Well, how is the global state agenda? What, what do they have to do with what happened to you, and and or the aftermath? Well, he says it's what's tangled up in it, you know, and it's to. Um, because you know his death is starting to bring out even more stuff that's hidden and even expose more things. And he says, and it's really kind of all linked to one another. And he says, and we will see how that is even more, how it's all linked to one another. Um, just the, I feel like it's more of like control with the, the money, okay. what we, yeah, it's all controlled is what he's showing me. We'll, we'll see more. Well, did the globalist, you know, deep state, whoever, um, cause your, I mean, set things up for you to die, to create chaos, like a, what do you call it, red flag kind of thing? You know, they didn't personally set out for me, he says, but it, there's, there's a link. Okay, well, we just can't say it. Probably too dangerous. That's fine. Uh, are organized groups or foreign governments behind the violent looting and rioting of various cities? If so, what are the names of the groups? Don't do that because it'd be too dangerous. How do they communicate and who funds them? First of all, are there any organized? Well, uh, you know, he says there's possibly he says there's probably a, a few organized groups and stuff like that. He says. But what people are, that's what people are focused on. He says, but what people really are not seeing um, 
is that, and I feel like he's talking about the people that ask those questions, what people aren't seeing is that people from around the world are saying this is enough. Yeah. Injustice is enough, not just with people of color, but just in general of everything that's, because everybody, every country has their own injustice and people are tired of it. And this has um, hit the wave to where everybody's taken a part of it and standing up and they're feeling more empowered to stand in their truth because of being locked up in the house for so long because of this COVID-19. Wow. They're starting to question everything. And they are starting to see that they are being told what they can and cannot do. It's like they are feeling more repressed than ever. And yeah. so this is why they're coming out. Um, and they're exercising their, their, their truths. They're becoming but, more. But there's no organized um, attempt to encourage, organize, or fund the violence and the looting and the rioting. Either domestically or abroad. He says no. Okay. Uh, there are reports that you were resisting arrest. You said you were. Were you under the influence of any, um, anything at that time? He said no. Uh, are, is anybody in your family, your father, your twin, your friends, your family, anybody you know a Freemason? I don't, know, I don't even know what that is. I can't remember. I don't even know what a Freemason is. He, he says it's something to do with, um, they, he's telling me it has something to do with, um, like tied into this somebody, you know, organize, organization of something. Okay. He said no. He said no. Okay. Uh, okay, what can we do to transform the law enforcement? Because Eric, my son, was brutally beaten up by a white cop and he, had, he did nothing wrong, completely innocent. So, I'm, and I really feel like that in part helped him make the decision to end his life. So I, I'm, I of course, take issue with, with that as well. And I would anyway, but... Um, so what can we do? I mean, like this Mr. Brooks that just got killed, shot in the back. I mean, why couldn't the police officer have gone to his car, woken him up, said, hey, let's move your car, we'll do that, and let's call you an Uber, you go home. Why? Why, do they always, why does it always have to be confrontation? So what do, you, what do you think we should do to transform law enforcement to be an ally of the community and um, operate through love as best they can, maybe tough love sometimes, instead of fear and hate. Well, he says, um, he says, believe it or not, the majority of the, the people who work on the police for, force do come from a place of, of wanting to help and, and, and stuff. Um, but then you have that, you know, 10%, he says, and it might be a little more, but 10% um, who are not. And he says, what it is, is when they, he says, when you see brutality on the streets day in and day out, you see death, you see children beaten, women beaten, a lot of domestic violence and just a lot of horrible crimes you have to turn on this or turn off a part of you and he's showing me like like a hard shell put on you so you don't so you can function when you get home oh yeah and he, and he says there needs to be some in-house more availability of psychologists working with the police to help them when they've seen a horrific scene where the mother or the father or whoever killed everyone in the family or something and they had to go there you know like they need something to help them to process that and he says yes start morning meditations or meditation says, before each shift and he says and you know um and another thing the police officers 
are not paid as much as people think they are. No. So they work a lot of extra jobs to make money. So they're sleep deprived. Mm. So you get that sleep where they're sleep deprived and then somebody, you know, acts stupid and they take it out on them. And it's because it was the three cars before that is what triggered them, you know, oh and then that person gets it. And so that's what's going on, but they need to, but it's not okay to talk about any of this and it's not okay to talk about your anger and everything. Um, it's, it's almost like, yes, this is what it, what you, it is okay to talk, but it's not okay to talk about what's going on. Mm -hmm. You have to kind of keep quiet. Mm -hmm. One of the things that's coming out though, he said is, um, I don't, yes, the, there's a brotherhood or sisterhood within the police force, within all of that. But I feel like from what he's showing me, they're going to have an opening to where it's almost like call this number for a whistleblower. It will be like call this number if you're seeing something. Yeah, because there are that 10% or more that probably are policemen because they have been bullied and they want to be, you know, the bullies. Okay, so what about teaching all the, um, non, the nonviolent communication? He, Eric, Eric is saying, Mom, they are taught that. Oh, <laughs> they are taught that. Oh, wow. all using it. All right. Um, what about screening candidates better to make sure they don't have any psychological issues and things like that? I know they do must go through some psychological screening, but are they testing, are they screening for everything they should? Eric is jumping in on this one. He's saying they do screen them but you know they can seem fine and and they are fine but then when they start seeing stuff they yeah. they're getting triggered and he says and they're getting triggered from their own shit eric's words and so of course no and nobody and then nobody sees it and he says and and then the person doesn't think oh my shit's getting triggered let me go talk to a psychologist and see what i can do it, that just doesn't happen Okay, well, real quick, uh, what, how, what can we do about racism, white supremacy, whatever, everything, or, or just pre prejudice against any kind of group, LBG, um, L LBGT, LGBT, yeah, cute, I'm sorry, I'm mis mixed up, and anybody. Uh, what can we do? Well, they're both saying the, the best thing to do is go after it in a peaceful way because when you go after it in a a loud screaming way they don't hear anything yeah. and so to go by it in a peaceful way and find people to be your voice in like your state representatives and stuff like that find people to do that he says in having these peaceful marches you know because this is what they see and what they hear when you start doing all that screaming and yelling, they don't hear you. They just think you're, oh, you're right. dumb or whatever. And they just, they just don't pay attention to it. Um, Eric is saying, you know, we probably won't ever get rid of the, the white supremacists or the other groups that, have, that hate and stuff like that anytime soon. Ugh. But we can minimize it. Yeah. And, and in and, and showing our, staying in our strength, staying in our power, staying in our love, staying in our heart is what he's saying. Because mm. this will help, and not to treat those people with hate and anger as much as we want to, but start treating them with love and everything yeah. because. Yeah. All right, yeah. this will be a lightning round. We don't have six minutes left. I wanna know, okay. real quick, what were you here to learn, if anything, and what were you here to teach? Um, he says what he was here to learn was patience. That's right off he says was patience. Um, and uh, what he was here to teach was love. Oh, I like that's a good combination. Any regrets looking back on your life? He, he wished he was a better father. Okay. Uh, any message you want 
to give the collective or any specific family members or friends? Um, he says he loves his children. He really wants them to know that because I feel like and just the emotion. He says he doesn't, I, I just don't feel like his children knew how much he loved them. Yeah. Um, well, now, if they if they watch this, yeah, yeah he um, them to watch this maybe. Yeah, he says he really wants them to know that, and he's mm, very much pulling them all together. He's showing me how he's creating. I don't know. I guess he's going to create situations to keep them pulled together. Good. Is there anything else you're doing as your life's work in the afterlife to help us on this side? He says, you know, right now his focus is on, um, it's like keeping people in the march. He's showing me like keeping them lined up, like going peacefully in a, in a down the right path with okay. this. Um, any final messages for the collective, for humanity? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I'm there sorry. Was... Any uh, final messages for the collective for humanity that you haven't already mentioned or, or not? He says, he, he keeps talking about love, you know, he says, make sure that whatever you do, you come from a place of love. Yes, that's what Eric preaches also. Uh, uh, is there any fun little factoid, some, something, some piece of information that nobody really knows about you? He has a beautiful voice. He sings. Oh, really? Yeah, he says he has a beautiful voice. You're singing with the angels. Denise, do you have anything to ask George or Eric? Do you have anything to ask? Well, you can ask any time, but anything you want to ask that we should yeah. be privy to? Um, Eric, says, Eric says no, but he says, you know, what he's doing with him right now is... Um, Eric is, Eric is just showing me a basketball and a piano. So I guess one like piano and one like basketball. And I'm assuming Eric like piano and, yeah. and Floyd or George like uh, basketball. So they're going to intertwine each other's talents with that is what he's just showing me. Eric, Eric seems very fond of him. Um, mm -hmm. Eric just really, their, their energy just soothes together. I don't know. It's just a beautiful blend. Together. Well, it sounds like, well, Eric always loved the big, gentle bears. Uh, you know, the, he really always liked that kind of energy. So it doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. And he's very gentle, this person. He's very, yeah. extremely. Well, very thank you, Eric, for bringing George in. Thank you, George. Not only for coming in and, and uh, you know, clarifying so many things but also for, for having such courage as a spirit as a soul to come to earth in this incarnation and suffer for the greater good he says um thank you um he's saying dr elisa um he says it truly was his honor to do this um to do to come here in this lifetime and it was his honor to come here and um speak with you um and i um he's showing me he's he's always available to talk to you is what he says he really admires your work he really oh, admires your thank work. you all right. Also, thank you so much, Denise, Denise Ramon at deniseramon.com. You guys got to check out her, her site. And by the way, your hair looks so pretty today. Well, it always does. I mean, I don't know who does your hair, but it's awesome. Uh, well, thank you. I'll have to let her know. Okay. All, All right. right. Well, thank you. I love you, Eric. I love you, George. I love you, Denise. He, love you. He said, I love you, Mama. Love you a bunch, he says. Thank you. That Take care. Very good. Very good. Thank you.